All right, something I wanted to show here, as I'm cleaning up this housing, here we're on the pinion side, and you can see some silicone buildup right here that was on there from when it was all installed. And you want to make sure you get all of this off. See that? You want to get all of this off and nice and clean so that you're starting fresh when you pound in your new seal. So you don't want to have any of these little bumps still here to prevent it from sealing. Then you get a pinion leak out the front. So, you know, just go over everything. Clean up especially well those ceiling areas like that one and here on the axle side as well there's some globs that we're going to be really working on. So you just want to take your time to make sure that it's nice and clean. And this is a good part about doing the job yourself because at a shop they might not have time to give this much attention to detail so uh, this is where it can pay off if you do it right. Alright something uh, interesting that's worth mentioning you can see these little slits right here. There's one there, and this one down here. Those are actually passageways where oil, you know, from the turning gear, um, the ring part of the gear, is being swooped up and pushed up into the front of the pinion side. And that's how you're, that's how you're keeping that front pinion bearing uh, nice and lubricated. So. Um, it's a good idea to run your fingers, you know, a sock that's clean, like I've been doing, up inside of these and just push out any kind of debris that might be blocking that because it's crucial that that front pinion bearing up there gets uh, lubricated correctly. So I'm getting this off. It's pretty clean now. Um, I'm scraping off all the extra silicone that I can find and just getting it ready for when the parts get here in, in two days or so. All right, so we set the inner race inside of the housing. Now we're going to use uh, this race setter that we're going to pound the race down with. Now we're actually using kind of a bigger size that's going to cover the entire race because sometimes the race drivers, even when they're setting inside of the race and they're being pounded down, they don't like to go even. So we have a size that fits the entire race and we're going to pound and try to get it to seat directly straight on. Alright, so now we have the housing on the ground just to kind of get a, a better hit on it. And as you can see, we're just hitting it straight down. And this is why it's good to have the axle out of the car so you can really have, you know, some good hitting motion. You can imagine what this is like when the axle's still on the car. So we're driving in the new race here. What we're going to do is take the old race that came out and set it on top and then with one of these race drivers, we're going to use one of the bigger ones, so it just completely covers it. That way we'll get a good straight hit on it. It's very important that you drive the races in straight. If it's crooked, pop it out and start over. Okay, now that this race is in pretty good, we're using the 59 millimeter race driver. We're just going to put it down in there to finish it all off. Alright, so to finish this off, we're going to put the old race in there one more time. And since now the housing is taller, we're going to put the race driver like that in the older race and just give it a few pounds until we know it's completely level. Yeah, now the races are hardened steel and the driver is made out of aluminum, so it's a softer material that's not going to damage the race. But you will notice a few ring marks that the race driver will put on there. So just kind of rub them off with your finger, just to get them nice and smooth again. All right, so now we're taking our bearings. This is the pinion bearing for the front, and we did the same thing down here. We're just putting a little bit of gear oil in here to, just to kind of set it up and get it pre-lubed so that it's uh, nice and wet by the time we start wrenching on it, start turning the wheels. Okay, so with our inner race installed, now we're going to put the outer pinion bearing in, head first. Okay, get it to sit in there nice and flush. 
Then we have what's called an oil slinger. And this piece goes in here to help, as you can see down here in the front, oil is pushed up on top of the, the front of the pinion here. And this acts to deflect the oil in different ways. All right, so I'm just applying a little bit of the silicone for the pinion seal. And then we'll be applying this, we'll be pounding it into the actual housing. You don't want to do too much and goob it up, especially because where that, uh, right here where the oil gets slinged up, you don't want to gob that up and keep oil from reaching the pinion. Okay, so now with the new pinion seal, I'm just going to lightly tap it around and get it into place. Okay, these are the parts that we removed from the axle. Um, this is the original pinion. And what we had to do was remove the pinion bearing. We had to have it pulled off. You can cut it off, I guess, if you want. Cut it right here and split it open and take it off. But we had to take the original shims that were here, put them on the new pinion, and then press a new pinion bearing on on top of those. Okay, for the carrier, this is the carrier that came out. Um, I'm not going to go to the trouble to pull these out because I might use this in a different car because this is the 28 spline unit so I, I couldn't use it with my new axles. But um, basically you'll, if you're using your same traction lock you'll want to have the, the carrier bearings here and here pulled off and then new ones put on. So that's just some of the, the parts here that you're going to be looking at.